Hey guys, welcome to part two of Every Energy Problem Ever. Um, I thought I would open with the same thing that I used at the beginning of part one, just to remind everybody of the scheme for every energy problem ever, just in case you're in fact watching part two first, which I suppose you could be, right? So the idea is always decide, is it delta E equals zero or delta E equals work? You're only gonna have work pretty much if there is friction present. Uh, in theory, there could be in a problem where I give, uh, give you an applied force, but I haven't done those in a while, okay? So pretty much it's gonna be, if there's friction, then that's when it's gonna be delta E equals work. Step two is decide what kind of energy is present at each of the two, or three, I guess, moments that you're looking at out of your list of kinetic, gravitational, potential energy, and elastic potential energy, bearing in mind that you could have more than one type present at a particular moment. All right, once you've got all that set up, including your calculation for work based on whether it's on a flat surface or a sloped surface, then you can plug in into your um, delta E equals either zero or work, and then solve for whatever you're supposed to solve for. All right, so we're gonna see that applied to a couple of uh, problems here now in part two related to springs. All right, now also by way of reminder, because I said this at the end of the last video because I thought I was gonna fit everything into one, um, if it says hung, don't use energy. Or if it says placed on top of a spring and then doesn't say anything about pushing it down more, that's an equilibrium problem, and that's going to be this kind of thing. Very often, a question with a spring will lead with an equilibrium question, and the goal there is to make you calculate the spring constant. Okay? All right, now if it says something is like dropped onto a spring or like hung from a spring and then dropped, that's an energy question because it's going to be you know, moving around and bouncing and all the rest of it. So that's an energy question. And you have to be very careful about accounting for each of the various kinds of energy present at each position. Okay, because people forget frequently, here's your reminder. The spring constant is measured in newtons per meter. That comes from Hooke's law, which says that F equals kx. I know it says negative kx, but the negative sign's usually not important for these questions. That means that k is F over x, and F is measured in newtons and position, or extension rather, is measured in meters. So that means a spring constant is newtons per meter. Uh, so if they gave you kilo newtons per meter or something like that, you have to convert that to regular newtons per meter. And the most frequently used trick here is that the extension is not gonna be given in meters. It's very often given in centimeters. All right, so if that happens, don't plug that number in. You will get crazy answers. Because uh, there's a big difference between compressing something 10 meters and 10 centimeters. Okay, so make sure you convert before you plug into any of your equations. All right, so now first we're going to look at the scenario where we are firing something upwards. I'm going to erase and make some space. So the scenario then is a mass is placed on top of a spring and then compressed. Okay. So it's not equilibrium, right? We compressed it past equilibrium and then released, and it goes flying upwards. All right, now the tricky question that they could ask with something like this would be, what is the speed when it reaches position A? All right, so I'm gonna first ask that one. Find the speed at A. All right, and then the easier question actually is gonna be, what's the maximum height it could reach? All right, now remember, I'm not gonna work out the nitty gritties here because I'm not putting any numbers to this, right? This is just purely, can you set it up, all right? So now, that's what you're gonna do right now is uh, pause the video and try to set it up, right? Figure out what kind or kinds of energy are present at each of these three positions and then use that to hopefully set up your delta E. All right, so pause the video get too far into the setup here, I want to check and make sure that you've got the right kinds of energy, because otherwise when you do the whole delta E stuff, it's not going to work. All right, so at B, that's the maximum height, it stopped 
up there, so it only has gravitational potential energy. At position A, that's the tricky one, right? I, I told you moments ago that it was tricky. The reason it's tricky is because it is not just kinetic energy. Relative to where it started, it's a little bit higher. So very frequently with springs, people will forget about, oh, the spring moved it upwards a little bit, which means that it gained gravitational potential energy while doing so, all right? So if you fire something upwards using a spring, in general, it's actually going to be slower when it leaves the barrel of your spring-loaded cannon than if you had fired it sideways, because if you fire it sideways and it's just elastic potential energy all goes into kinetic, as opposed to elastic potential energy goes into a little bit of gravitational potential energy and some whatever is left over kinetic energy. Okay, so that was the tricky one, was that particular spot right there. All right, now see if you can set up the uh, delta E equals zero or work in order to figure out the speed at A. Here's our setup. Uh, it's delta E equals zero unless they do some shenanigans with air resistance, which is very unlikely. Um, so final minus initial, we said the quote final energy at A uh, would be both kinetic and gravitational potential energy. The initial energy is elastic potential energy. So if you've got that all set up, the one thing that you could perhaps be confused on here is, oh shoot, what do I put in for the height? Well, if you look at the picture, the change in the height just happens to also be the same as the extension, or excuse me, in this case, compression that the spring was under in the first place. So h equals x, therefore you should be able to uh, set things up and go from there. All right, now see if you can figure out how to set it up to get the maximum height. That's actually a little more straightforward, so go ahead and uh, pause the video and set that one up. And there it is for determining the maximum height. Right? We started with elastic potential energy at the very bottom and with only gravitational potential energy at the very top. Okay. Now, one further point I want to make before we move on to, oh no, what if we drop a mass onto a spring, is sometimes at this step, people want to cancel out the masses. Those do not cancel. Uh, you have to have a mass in every term in order to be able to cancel anything, or to cancel mass specifically, okay? So something only cancels if it's in every single term. If there is a spring, mass will not cancel. So, there we are. All right. Let's see if you can go ahead and set this one up then, right? The, com the question here being solve for the compression of the spring, given that you drop it from a height of D above the uncompressed spring. All right, so see if you can set that one. That up here seems actually super straightforward, but there is one sort of tricky little quirk at the end of it. Um, so final energy is, of course, elastic potential energy. It fell on the spring and squished it, right? The initial energy is gravitational potential energy because it started high up, all right? The problem is that people usually put in the wrong value for the height if this is the first time they've seen this type of question, where they only think about this distance as being part of the height. But if you look at it from the point of view of gravity, gravity is going to keep pushing on this thing the whole way down. So for any change in vertical position, gravity is going to be involved. The gravitational potential energy, therefore, has to include not just d, but also x. So when you put it in, it's going to be d plus x. All right. At this point, of course, if it were a numbers problem, you'd want to plug in numbers, and you'd have to use the quadratic equation. Okay, so if it's something dropping onto a spring like this, that's the tricky sort of nitty-gritty step is that the height is not just the distance above the spring, but includes the compression distance that uh, the mass moves the spring downwards. All right, now let's see if we can set this one up with a mass being fired sideways by a spring. All right, there it is, the setup for this one. We started with 
elastic potential energy. And kind of like one of the ones that we looked at in the previous video, that block slides to rest. It doesn't go up a hill, so it doesn't have gravitational potential energy. It isn't moving anymore, so it doesn't have kinetic energy, and it didn't like compress a different spring, so we don't have elastic potential energy at the end. Um, very often with this one, people put in like K for kinetic energy here, because uh, they're thinking about the moment like, like after it leaves the spring, which is actually irrelevant. What you care about is the moment where it comes to rest, um, which is the question being asked. All right, well, I hope that was uh, a sufficient tutorial video. Now you know how to do every energy problem ever? Maybe. What was that? I, something happened. Oh, oh, stop. <laughs>